I'm Ken Shackle, a uh, professor at UC Davis, Department of Plant Sciences. We're out here in a prune orchard in Yolo County, and uh, we're going to demonstrate the pressure chamber. Uh, the pressure chamber is a device that basically measures the blood pressure of a tree. It's measuring the water potential of the tree, that is how much suction that tree is pulling on the water to get it out of the soil and to lose it to the atmosphere. So what we do is we put a bag on the leaf near the trunk of the tree on a shaded part of the tree and we let it sit there for a little while and what that, uh, what that does is the tension in the water in the leaf equilibrates, becomes equal to the tension on the water in the trunk of the tree and that basically gives you a very good measure of how much stress that tree is under. When that water is under a lot of, of stress, the tension that's being held, that water is being held by uh, the leaf is very high and it may take a lot of pressure in the pressure chamber to push that water out. So if the reading is maybe five bars or six bars on the pressure chamber, that means there's not much tension on the water in the leaf. But if it gets up to 12, 14, 20, we've made measurements as high as 30, 40, even up to 60 bars, although some equipment won't go that high. That's a very severe stress. So it's a good tool for finding out whether your trees are stressed or not, how much they're stressed, whether they near the irrigation or not. And in a drought situation like we have this year, uh, where the parts of your orchard are that need the water most. So we're out here in a prune orchard. It's about one o'clock. We sample the leaves between about one and three in the afternoon to get the maximum level of stress on the tree for that particular day. Um, and the sampling is just to take a, a foil bag of some sort and grab a leaf that's close into the main trunk and shaded position. And you can fold the leaf a little bit just to get it inside the bag. Usually it'll slip there pretty easily. And then just pinch the bag top close a little bit. And we're gonna let that sit there for about uh, 10 minutes or uh, as long as it takes to, for us to walk through the rest of the orchard and uh, get some other leaves bagged and then we'll cycle back here and we'll actually sample this one for measurement. The okay, I'm going to sample this leaf now just by simply pulling it back off of the, of the stem. Every leaf has got a little bit of a nap to it so that if you pull it off, it comes off real easy when you pull it backwards. Then I'm gonna pull out the petiole a little bit and I'm gonna take this razor blade and cut it to a nice point so that it fits through the seal very easily. And then that hopefully will fit right straight through, no problem. Tighten it down real good. Take the razor blade carefully. Don't kill yourself. And then slice it off nice and flush with that surface. Then you're ready to put it into the chamber. Seal it up. And walk out into the sun so you can see it real clearly. So now we're out in the sun. We can observe the cut end of the petiole and you can see the xylem tissue. In this case it's a prune tree and the xylem looks a little bit like a horseshoe. Uh, and it's dry and so uh, you want to start pumping now uh, I've already done a few of these trees out here and they were around 17 so I'm not even going to bother to check it until I get up to somewhere around 10 um, and then once we're where we think the end point might be then we can kind of slow down and watch it with each stroke pump is about a half a bar so we're up to about 12 and a quarter and if you look at this now you'll see it's just as dry as uh, when we put it in there so there's no water coming out yet and it's usually pretty obvious once you start seeing the water come out most people would say oh yeah there's water coming out it doesn't take a lot of training to uh, Oh, there it is. Okay, so that's at actually 14.6. And it's actually bubbling a little bit. 
Now, you, if, if you want to check, you can let a little bit of pressure off, and that water should go right back inside. And there I took it from 14.6 to about 13.6, uh, and the water went back in, and you can actually check it. You can start pumping again. And you should get about the same, about the same number. Sometimes the second one is a little bit higher than the first, but usually not by much. So this is about 15, actually. And what about time of day for measurements? So our, our measuring time is typically between about 1 and 3 in the afternoon, which is the time of maximum stress for, the, for all plants, but the trees in particular because it's the midday period, it's hottest and driest at that time. You can make a pressure chamber measurement on a plant any time of day you want. And in the old days, a lot of people used to like to make measurements at about four or five o'clock in the morning before the sun came up. Uh, I don't like to get up that early, but another reason <laughs> is that what that tells you is how wet that plant will be through that whole day. And usually what you want to find out is not how wet it will be, but how dry it will be in the middle part of the day. So the sampling time is important if you want a number uh, where we've done research to find out if it's this dry then they need water. We don't have any values for what would be called pre-dawn water potential or water potential at midnight or any other time of the day, but it goes through a normal daily cycle, kind of like a heartbeat of a plant. Every 24 hours it's up at night, down in the day, up at night, down in the day. And uh, we, we may, it may turn out that those, those numbers are very interesting physiologically for us to understand, but right now, uh, a convenient time for sampling is midday. Uh, and if you take values other than midday, um, we've tried, but we can't predict the midday values from values, let's say, at 9 or 10 in the morning. Uh, in addition, the problem is that at 9 or 10 in the morning, things are happening very quickly. The water potential is changing. The, the plant is going through its heartbeat and it's at a pretty rapid time of change. And so then the exact time you take it and the exact conditions you take it become a little bit more important than just the average midday conditions when we take it at midday. So uh, prune irrigation, we've had quite a bit of experience with. And one of the advantages of some stress on a prune tree is that the fruit, uh, the fruit will, will get to, uh, to be a little bit drier. And since prune fruit are harvested fresh and then dried, the drier the fruit is at harvest, the less drying costs there are. So uh, what we recommend uh, for our values of midday stem water potential over the season is that they start kind of at the wet end in May uh, around five or six or seven and then by the time you get to July August when they'll be harvested they're down around 14 and so every week we have you know that linear decline in uh, water potential or more and more stress through the season now of course when you irrigate that relieves the stress and then before the next irrigation then that will be the time of maximum stress so it uh, depends a little bit on whether it's drip irrigated or flood irrigated or low uh, micro sprinkler irrigated. Uh, all of those things have um, uh, different effects on the plant in terms of when you'll see the most stress and when you'll see the least stress. If it's a flood irrigation or sprinkler irrigation, then you'll see very little stress right after the irrigation and then more and more stress as time goes on after that. If it's drip irrigated, then it might be a little bit more uh, even through time, um, but then some people manage their drip kind of like it was flood, so they'll irrigate for 48 hours and then wait for a week and then irrigate again. Uh, all of these things you can tell by making the measurement, the pressure chamber measurement on the tree to find out how strong a stress cycle you're putting your trees through. If they're on sandy ground, uh, you may be surprised even after sprinkler irrigation that by uh, you know five or six days later they may be under a lot of stress and uh, and so that's when you can use that number to determine whether they're going through too much stress uh, and your irrigation cycle needs to be closed up a little bit again if it's drip if it's micro sprinkler that could change so um, there aren't any general rules about what the irrigation frequency should be 
basically because plants respond depending on the soil and depending on the climate, and that's what the pressure chamber is there to tell you about. So just to summarize, there's a lot of conditions, especially in prune trees, where managed level of stress is a good idea. I've mentioned about the uh, uh, improving the dry away of the fruit. There could also be um, re reduction in excessive canopy growth if you're trying to reduce that. Um, and so imposing stress to manage a tree is a tricky situation because you have to know how much stress is too much stress and how much stress is not enough stress. And that all depends on the weather and the soil and your irrigation management strategy. So that's where the, the pressure chamber can help you kind of dial that in and learn each time you irrigate what the trees are going through and, and try to target uh, the, the level of stress that, that we recommend based on our research that's good for fruit dry away and not so much that it hurts uh, yield.